right guys, we're back in this garden, the big one, and uh, there's quite a lot going on in the borders, so I'll show you all around later um, when I've done the grass, but it's been three weeks, and um, I'll show you what it really looks like. This is what it looks like. They've had it treated, and, um, and it's quite long, and they've got all sorts going on. I think that's a gladioli there and some really tall dahlias so we'll give you a close-up um, and I'll focus on the lawn first. So we're getting through the first cut, still a few rows to go but I'll show you what Steve does, he's hand edging the lawn really nice a nice sharp edge to the lawn all the way along and uh look here's a, a verbena i bought one of those for my garden at the garden center it's a really nice one it, it's quite long and just sort of waves in the wind <laughs> and then some cosmos behind it and some other some more cosmos behind that that's slightly different color anyway i'm going to go back to the mowing because there's too much to show you right now but we'll have a good tour around the garden later all right guys, there it is. So, all finished. And, uh, and it's looking very nice. They've had it treated. Uh, and with, with all the rain, it's just looking amazing. They, they, there are brown patches actually that they were pointing out to me three weeks ago when we were last here that they can see more from the top of their, you know, where their bedrooms are and further up uh, these, the steps on the, on the top terrace. But I, I, I'm gonna show you around some of these um, flowers because they're just looking absolutely incredible. You won't believe some of the stuff they've got going on here in this garden and there's some things um, that I want to use a plant app to have a look at. There's two things that I want to to know what they are. Um, this is the first thing I saw. It's very nice. I wouldn't mind one for my own garden so let's get a picture of it. and see if the, the app can work it out. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's um, it's a phlox. And I actually bought one of these from the garden center. So, so that's encouraging. I have to have a think about, or have a look at what color I bought. Um, <laughs> the, the, these are nice. Um, phlox is spelt P-H-L-O-X. These are nice. Um, I've got one of my customers likes us to pull them out because they can be quite invasive and spread. And, and the sedums have just started to come into flower in some areas. Um, and for me, that's really a sign of autumn. And then just buy these, I, I'm not sure what that one is, but I'll find out eventually. Um, but buy these flocks, we've got these lovely verbenas and, and look at that sight, just the verbenas swaying in the wind against that incredible backdrop of a, a lawn. And then we've got some Agapanthus just starting to come out. Uh, I think in some gardens they'll already be out and flowering already. And I saw some when we were down in in Devon on holiday. Ah, okay. Um, so there's some Rebecca there. The these are the. I think these will be called Rebecca. Lovely yellow, sort of daisy-like flowers. Oh, and something a bit more unusual back there. I can't quite reach it's in the back of the border but the, this is a lovely little area here where we've got some marigolds here they're a beautiful color they're not like the french marigolds that i know and love um i haven't seen those before they're very nice try and get some of these plants against the backdrop of the lawn and then we've got these things here which um out of every plant in this garden I really like the probably the most I'd say and the, and and the gardener here has told me they're called zinnias and I'll try and show you as many as I can but they they come in different colors 
and then there's another one there and they just look absolutely gorgeous they're really delicate compact bright um, really classy little looking flower but they are annuals and so I would normally want to go for a perennial plant this is nice look at all these colors in here so we've got this delicate pink down here yeah Bought some. A um, little bit taller, I think, and Absolutely. slightly different. Maybe speckled yeah. on the inside. All oh, right. So there might be a slightly different. Yeah. Okay. So there's some daisies here. Big flush of daisies. Yeah. And then there's an amazing gladioli that's come out up here. Look at this. Beautiful. And it's got all these verbenas around it. And then at the back, there's a load of dahlias. And down here, there's so there's some sedums down here. Some, some with a dark stem and a light stem. Often you just see a, a light green stem. And then look, there's a little bee in the nasturtium flower. Oh, and another bee, a slightly different species, going into the nasturtiums as well. And these are a classic from my childhood, these nasturtiums. You can eat the leaves and um, you can eat the flowers. And then there's some dahlias back there. These dahlias are very high. They're, um, they're about chest high with me, some up to my chin actually. Don't know how they've got them so high up. And then there's uh, a garden behind. I'll show you a little secret area within a secret area in this garden. Here's some sweet peas, all multicoloured ones, and the, the gardener here says that she, the owner, she picks them every day and has a vase full. And here we've got some really tall snapdragons. And then some cosmos in the background. You can see, uh, see what I can show you. That's a beautiful... Oh no, that's not a Cosmos. I don't know what that is. What's this? Dahlia. Oh, it's a Dahlia. Dahlia Red Star. Dahlia Red Star. This, this is beautiful, but it's been eaten. This is an Echinacea. Delicious candy. Echinacea. And what's did you, this? Did you take the zinnia? The bright. Oh yeah, we had a look at all the zinnias. Dahlia. And there's some on the other side. Yeah. And then some more Snapdragons, but different colours, so... And there's, a, there's the cosmos that I showed you earlier when we were following Steve doing his edging. These are some begonias down here. And then here you can see some more verbena plants growing up. They'll have just been seedlings and they'll um, possibly survive for next year. Another one there as well. And some cosmos floating around some dahlias. We've got a little bit of a mix of two different plants there with some snapdragons floating in the in the background. And then some geraniums, some annual geraniums here that are looking very nice. And they're a bit in the shade there and some red ones over there. That's a red flower geranium just about to come out. And then this is the white border at the back. So lots going on and this is a... <laughs> So here's a carnation on my way to the flocks and lots of lovely white daisies and, a, and the second flowering of a white rose. But um, this is the second thing that I wanted to find out what it was and the, the owner of the garden came and told me. And there are flocks as well like the first one we saw. So there's lots of different types of flocks. This has a smaller more delicate flower um, and, and the other one was a bigger flower and there's more as we come round but that's absolutely beautiful and a really late flowering nice summer plant really late summer 
white plant that looks absolutely amazing so I did buy a phlox from the garden centre I have to see what colour it is and I'm probably going to have to to get some more as well and the yellow ones I, I believe she keeps them under cover as well and just as we go round there's some some more phlox as well but I'd, it'll be interesting because they're a bigger flower it'll be interesting to see um a white phlox with a big flower uh, but the, the the smaller flower is very nice as well and then more verbena here very nice mix of, 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 of different plants in amongst each other at, at stages here and there's a red no I got that wrong it's cannas <laughs> they're called cannas she said she said zinnias a lot as well these are cannas the yellow ones and the and the red ones in a nice little round border within the garden and then we're going right down the other side of the, the garden now and these are more zinnias down here and lovely delicate little flowers all different colors and there's a few different colors here as well and a red one there's a, a sort of a blue hydrangea in the background slowly turning a little bit pink as well another yellow canna I think I've got them the right way around and just uh, up to chest height is this lovely cosmos I'm sure that's got more flowering to, to go and then we'll just come down this border and you can see the first terrace in front of us and it's absolutely full of quite a lot of really nice stuff more of this lovely verbena And uh, it's nice to see them against the lawn. We go in that direction, just floating around in the wind. And that's what they do in the borders. They're, they're very nice things. Towering above the rest, another zinnia. And I'm afraid we've missed a lot um, in this garden. There's been a lot of different things going on. Haven't in here there haven't been here filming for a, cool, a good couple of months now and I'm not sure what this one is but I've learnt the names of most of the flowers we've got this in our garden that's quite nice more late late summer color and that's the challenge getting that late summer color often it can come in spring and early summer and then you, you're left with nothing at the end of the year and then more flocks up here spelt p-h-l-o-x on the terrace some red geraniums and then the conifer collection and these really tall dahlias all sorts going on in this border on this terrace fuchsia and then these oh look there's a bee is it a bee maybe these lovely yellow daisies that have come out and they're really quite tall um, some probably up to the top of my head in the uh, in the back of this border And um, I've been given special permission, Steve's just packing up there, given special permission to show you their secret area at the back, which we've never seen. And I'll show you where it is and you'll probably be, be quite jealous of it because it's um, the guy who lives here. He says that he leaves his phone in the house, comes down to the bottom of the garden and this is where he can get away from all the trouble and strife of life and it's um, through here oh and I'll just show you a rose on the way and it's behind this fence at the back and it's um, I can't remember seeing it before I'm sure, sure he's shown it to me and I do see it um, on occasion in gardens there's this David Austin 
um, rose and it smells absolutely incredible. Then it's um, a rose maker in the UK that's very famous for um, old English roses that actually smell of something. So let's go and see this uh, quite special area in the back and uh, can I get through? Yes. There it is. So hopefully he won't mind me sharing this sanctuary he's got. So we'll sit down on this bench and then there's a, a phlox and some daisies and there's a huge willow tree and um, just some under some laurel as well. Wow, and that's a, a compost setup that even a professional could dream of. Look at that. He's got one, two. Yeah, he's got eight compost bins all together and a couple of black bins. And um, what could be better than this? It's a, a small brook. And you can hear a very nice quiet sound of water and I guess you could just walk up and down here a little bit there's um space to another weeping willow up there wow very nice peaceful private place okay that's it over and out